Hey folks, my name is John Lee, and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today we're going to be discussing the final historical chapter in the movie, Ode to My Father, and that is when Toksu participates in a TV show called Finding Dispersed Families. Now, what exactly is Finding Dispersed Families? Finding Dispersed Families was an actual TV show that occurred in South Korea in 1983. Now, 1983 was the 30th anniversary of the end of the Korean War, and at the time, a TV producer at KBS, which is South Korea's national TV broadcasting station, came up with a brilliant idea. He wanted to come up with a single episode, about 95 minutes long, about finding dispersed families. So, presumably, the TV producers were looking for, at the most, maybe a dozen or so people who wanted to participate in the TV show. So, KBS made a public announcement. They were looking for people who were willing to participate in a TV show about finding people who were dispersed from each other because of the Korean War. But KBS got a lot more than it bargained for. Instead of getting maybe a couple of dozen letters or phone calls, they were inundated with thousands of letters and phone calls. By the way, before I go on, I want to point out that when people think of Korean family reunions, this is what they normally think about. The first and only face-to-face -face meetings between Korean relatives separated for over six decades at least. But finding dispersed families was not that. It predates all of that. Finding dispersed families was not about a reunion of North and South Koreans. It was a reunion of just South Koreans. At the time, there were South Koreans who were living in the same country but had no idea where their family members were. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail later. So, no, Finding Dispersed Families was not a single 95 minute long TV show. It lasted for 138 days, and there's 453 hours of footage. During the course of the show, more than 50,000 people applied to look for their long-lost family members, and among those 50,000 people, 10,000 people found each other. It was an emotional time in South Korea. Almost everyone was glued to the TV screens, and it was a period of pure national catharsis. But remember, this took place in 1983, 30 years after the suspension of the Korean War. So the question is, why did it take so long for something like this to take place? Well, the easy answer is, it didn't. There were plenty of other family reunions that took place before this. But, in the past, most of the family reunions that took place took place via newspapers or radio stations. This was the first time that it took place via TV. And the success of this TV show is a testament to the sheer power of television. This was an immensely emotional time in South Korea. And this movie reflects that sense of emotion quite well. This entire movie is an emotional movie. It starts from the Korean War and it talks about poverty-stricken South Koreans working in West German coal mines and about the Vietnam War. But this segment in the movie is by far the most emotional one. By the way, Stella Cho is in this movie, and if you're not familiar with Stella Cho, she is the actress who was in that viral YouTube video a few years back uh, that was titled, What Kind of Asian Are You? If you have not yet seen that uh, video, I highly recommend that you do. Now, Stella Cho is in this movie for only a very few short minutes, but during her very brief on-screen time, she steals every scene. Now, earlier, I shared with you that video about North and South Korean families getting reunited. Now, this came after Finding Dispersed Families. Finding Dispersed Families was such a successful TV show that even today, UNESCO recognizes it for its uh, cultural significance. But as I said, this took place in 1983. The very first North and South Korean family reunion took place after this show took place, and it took place two years later in 1985. Since 1985 to the present day, there have been altogether 25 North and South Korean family reunions. Had it not been for finding dispersed families, those family reunions might not have taken place. And now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can talk about the main part of this video, which is the reason that you clicked on this video in the first place, which is the title, Why I Don't Like Korean Movies That Deal With Reunification. Now, if you're new to Korean movies, you might not be fully aware of this just yet, but if you have been watching Korean movies, you would know that when it comes to themes about reunification of the Korean Peninsula, Korean movies tend to strike the same notes over and over again. There have been lots of Korean movies that have done the same thing. Whether they're talking about the theme of reunification directly or indirectly, they always strike the same notes. The division of the Korean Peninsula is a national tragedy, 
and reunification is an objective good. There's never any debate or argument about it. It's the objective good and it's every single Korean person's dream. But the truth of the matter is that not every person agrees that reunification is necessarily a good thing. In fact, there are a lot of younger South Koreans who are not that keen on reunification anymore. When it comes to the reunification of the Korean Peninsula, there are four kinds of Koreans. The first kind is the older generation of Koreans. They're the ones who still remember a united Korean Peninsula, and they're the ones who still have long lost family members in North Korea. And they're the most sympathetic group. They're the ones who seek reunification the most because they want to see their homes and their family members before they pass away. Sadly, these people are getting pretty old and they're dying out. And in a number of years, these people will no longer exist. The second type of Koreans are those who are not as directly affected as the first group is by the Korean War, but they still genuinely seek a reunification of the Korean Peninsula because presumably they believe in some kind of pan-Korean ethno-nationalism and believe that the reunification of the Korean Peninsula would lead to a lot of uh, economic advantages. The third group of Koreans are those who privately do not actually favor reunification, but those who publicly say that they favor it because saying that they oppose reunification is still an unpopular position to take. The fourth type of Koreans are those who really do not like the idea of reunification and are not afraid to say that they are opposed to it. So it's an unpopular position to take, but that doesn't mean that people don't think it. There are a lot of younger people who are opposed to the reunification of the Korean Peninsula. But when it comes to movies, they always take the side of the first two group of Koreans who always believe that the reunification of the Korean Peninsula is an objective good. They never seem to argue as to why it is good and they never seem to consider the reasons as to why it might not be good. Personally, I don't think South Korea is ready to take on the incredible burdens of reunification with North Korea. It is not like as though other South Koreans are completely unaware of this either. South Koreans are aware. Some of my favorite TV shows and movies are about the difficulties that modern South Koreans face in today's society. Considering how many challenges that there are that young Koreans have to face, which appear to be almost insurmountable, adding the prospect of reunification is simply madness. But again, every time the topic comes up in a movie, it's almost always taken as a good thing. And frankly, as a South Korean, as a young-ish South Korean, and as a moviegoer, I'm tired of seeing the same theme being played over and over again without having any sort of courage to take part in an intellectual debate about it. Reunification is an emotional subject, and so it makes sense for people to have such a visceral reaction to it. But it's also an intellectual topic that has to be discussed. But Korean movies don't do that because they keep pandering to the Korean audience about how emotional this all is and about how reunification is an objective, ethno-nationalistic goal that cannot possibly be argued against. It's tiresome and really, after a while, you gotta stop beating a dead horse. Now, it's not like as though I don't get it. The division of the Korean Peninsula is based on war and war is of course bad. And what's the opposite of war? Peace. It was the opposite of division, reunification, of course. But really, is it that simple? I'm pretty sure that the audience can handle a bit more nuance. Now, although I personally do not favor the reunification of the Korean Peninsula, that does not necessarily mean that I think I'm 100% right on the entire topic. There are plenty of arguments that support the reunification of the Korean Peninsula that are actually quite valid. But, a lot of Korean movies don't even talk about those valid reasons either. It's all just emotional scene after another. Instead of talking about it like rational adults about the pros and cons of a complex topic, they just deal with it as though it was just a simple emotional issue that everyone must just automatically side with. And personally, I think it's insulting. Alright, that about wraps it up. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And if you have a comment, feel free to leave it down below. My name is John Lee, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.